We have a coronal hole that is rotating into the Earth strike zone and could bring us some aurora. And one of the two bright regions is now rotating out of Earth view. Will it cause radio propagation to tank? Those stories and more in the news this week. Space weather this week is remaining mostly unsettled. We have a coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth's strike zone here in the next few days. Now, this one will be sending us some fast wind. Now, I doubt it's going to be strong enough to bump us up to storm levels, but we could easily reach active conditions. So you aurora photographers, especially at high latitudes, stay on your toes. The last time this region rotated into the Earth's strike zone almost a month ago, we did get some aurora. So don't give up hope just because we're at solar minimum. Now, the other story is that one of two bright regions is actually leaving the Earth-facing disk. It's rotating off of the sun's west limb. And that does mean that radio propagation is going to tank just a little bit. But we still have one bright region left on the Earth-facing sun. So we're going to be hovering around the top end of poor, likely for radio propagation over the next week. Switching to our M flare threat meter, you can see solar minimum conditions continue. We have no solar flare activity with a spotless sun, but we do have two unnumbered bright regions on the Earth facing disk right now. Back around August 2nd is when we started seeing the second of the two rotate into the Earth field of view, and the solar flux and, and X ray flux tapered up just a little bit. We've been hovering around the low end of marginal for radio propagation conditions over the past week. But now, as one of those two regions are rotating off of the sun's west limb and out of Earth view, we're going to see that solar flux and X-ray flux taper down again just a little bit. We're beginning to drop into the high end of poor for radio propagation conditions, but we're not going to fall completely off the map because we still have one of the larger regions still in Earth view easily over the next week. So it's going to be a little bit longer before things begin to tank. Switching to your solar storm conditions, as expected over the past week we've been kind of hovering around unsettled conditions. This was due to a small coronal hole that had rotated into the Earth strike zone, but it really wasn't all that accessible so it only sent us a little bit of pockets of fast wind. Not much of an aurora producer, but it did help GPS, uh, especially at low latitudes, and some radio propagation get a little bit of a boost with these unsettled conditions. But all this should change because we have another coronal hole that's rotating into the Earth's strike zone, and it could easily bump us up to active conditions um, in about three or four days. And this one might actually be an aurora producer. So you photographers, stay on your toes. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And what you can see on the backside is that there is some, a bit of activity. There's a bright region that, that's rotated to the west limb of Stereo's view. That's the region that has rotated into Earth view and is keeping that solar flux up and boosting radio propagation, albeit at the top end of poor conditions. But that will, we'll enjoy here over the next week. The problem is, is that there's no other real bright regions in Stereo's view. So that means in about 10 days, Radio propagation is likely going to tank, and it may stay that way for quite some time. Now, the good news is for you aurora photographers, you get this region that's rotating into the Earth strike zone here in the next couple days that could give us a chance for aurora, especially at high latitudes. And then, stereo showing us we've got one finger of a coronal hole that's going to be rotating into into the Earth view here in the next day or so, and that could give us some aurora possibilities, and even a larger chance in about two weeks when a larger coronal hole is going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone. So it looks like for aurora possibilities over the next couple weeks, we've got some good chances. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that fast wind from that very small coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here in about three or four days. Now, at high latitudes, we're only expecting unsettled to maybe active conditions with about a 35% chance of a minor storm. At mid latitudes, we're only expecting unsettled conditions with about a 5 to 10% chance of a minor storm. And these conditions will last over a couple days before things begin to calm down. So your aurora photographers, especially at high latitudes, stay on your toes. But 
even if you don't get Aurora this particular time, we actually have three chances over the next couple weeks to see some shots. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, I know I sound like a broken record, but everything is in the green when it comes to solar flares because we have a spotless sun. We're still dealing with solar minimum conditions. The nice thing is that we're hovering at marginal levels for radio propagation. It's the low end of marginal, but we're staying there for the next couple days before one of those two bright regions rotates completely off the Earth facing disk. And then we're going to go down just a little bit in solar flux and end up at the high end of poor propagation conditions easily over the next week. Now I'm also going to add one more piece of information that's new that I've been requested and that's regarding the air crew and frequent flyers. When we have solar minimum conditions this does mean that the cosmic ray flux actually penetrates a little bit higher and more intensely than normal. So as far as you frequent flyers and air crew are concerned who fly more than about 800 hours annually and who fly often at 35,000 feet or above you are now in the margin levels for radiation dose and that's just because of the cosmic ray flux that penetrates into our upper atmosphere. So please take the dose rates from the NARA's model into consideration in your flight plans. So despite being at solar minimum, the space weather this week is remaining a bit active. We have a small coronal hole that's rotating into the Earth's strike zone, and that could bump us to unsettled conditions, possibly even active conditions, over the next few days. So aurora photographers, especially at high latitudes, you could be getting some decent shots, so stay on your toes. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, things aren't looking quite so great. We have one out of two bright regions on the Earth-facing sun right now that is rotating off of the sun's west limb, which means uh, solar flux is beginning to kind of wane a bit, and radio propagation is dot kind of diving into the top part of low propagation and it's going to stay that way easily over the next week before the second of those two bright regions rotates off of the earth facing disk and then radio propagation is really going to tank and unfortunately it's going to stay that way for easily the next week after that. Now GPS operators, you guys are actually in a much better state because these unstable, these unsettled conditions actually stabilize the upper atmosphere for you. So as long as you stay away from the dawn dust terminators and away from Aurora, your GPS reception should look pretty good. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.